Hi loves, and welcome to the With Love Always podcast, a podcast to help you live the life you were created for. We are your hosts and your friends, Bree and Marissa, and we're so grateful you're here. We pray you listen and leave feeling more inspired, encouraged, and uplifted. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. We are so grateful as always that you are here and listening today and tuning in to this conversation and into our friendship. For today's episode, we are going to be talking all about waiting and just those deep desires in our heart of things that we want in our life, but maybe we are waiting to see them come to life. I think in our 20s, we are all waiting on something, whether we are waiting on the perfect moment, the right opportunity, the relationship, the job, the move, any sort of change in our life, I feel like we're constantly always seeking the next big thing. And while this is a beautiful time in all of our lives, whatever comes to mind in your heart right now in this moment of what you are waiting on and what you are praying for and what you are desiring to see in your life, I think in the same breath, when we are wanting something so bad, it can be really all consuming. It can be something that we can't stop thinking about of if we just received this, we'd finally be happy. And we know most of the time that the thing that we want is not going to come as quickly as we want it. And so in this episode, we want to dive into truly the pains of waiting, but how to wait well and how to be patient in the waiting process between where you are now, the process you might have to go on in order to get to the next blessing ahead and to just hopefully anticipating the beautiful blessings that are ahead of you. So in this episode, we're going to dive into our own pain points of things that we're waiting on and hopefully just encourage you guys along the way that you are not alone in the waiting. So let's dive into today's episode of how to wait well. Waiting well is a part of being truly ready for the beautiful gift of what's to come into your life. But I think that is something that we hear truly so often of like, wait well, or just be patient, or don't worry, or don't be stressed out about it. But then it just kind of brings you to the point of like, what does it actually mean to wait well? What does it actually mean to have such a big desire on your heart, but to truly be patient in the waiting? And we always hear it, the the phrase that goes, good things come to those who wait. And I think sometimes that can be such an encouraging statement, but in the same breath, it can feel so discouraging because it's like, well, what does that even practically mean and look like in our lives? And I know so many times, and even as I was trying to think about this episode and just different pain points of my life of things I'm waiting for, I was like searching my own heart and my own mind of, gosh, I don't even know what it looks like to wait well some days. But the more that I was just pressing in and just praying and just asking God, like, God, what are the ways whether it's right now in this season or in past seasons of my life that you have equipped me to be able to wait well. And so when I was thinking about this and when I was praying, I thought of the verse Isaiah 40, 31. And so it reads for those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I was really just so in awe of this verse as I was just praying and pressing into this topic because I feel like God gave me new eyes for what this meaning of this verse means, specifically when it comes to waiting. And I think when we think of soaring, when we think of flying, when we think of the metaphor of like what it looks like to be flying, you think of the ultimate freedom. You think of you've reached the heights of what you want to reach. You are literally looking at things from a bird's eye view and you have made it. But right here in this verse, there's so many different steps that are required to take before you can fly. It says, they will walk and not be faint. They will run and not grow weary. And then they will soar on wings like eagles. And I think it just made me think about life itself. Before we can fly, we first must walk. And once we're comfortable walking, then we get the endurance to run. And then once we've built that endurance, only then can we take off and fly. And I feel like that 
metaphor is so true for all of us in our waiting season. We cannot simply be where we are, standing still on the ground and expect to just fly and soar straight into our next blessing. I wish it worked that way, but it doesn't. There is a process, a painful process, a learning process, a process that requires time and patience and diligence and something of you for you to be able to then walk, run, and then fly in your life. And so... I pray that that's encouraging for anyone who is even right now, as we're just starting to open up this conversation, feeling like, gosh, I just don't want the process. I don't want to go through the waiting. I don't want to be patient with myself. I don't like where I'm at right now as I'm playing the waiting game over whatever blessing I'm waiting for in my life. But you have to know that you cannot fly to the heights that you want to fly. You cannot experience what you want to experience if you do not first build the endurance and the perseverance in your life to do so. So that is something that really encouraged me. And I pray just opens up all of our hearts as we just dive into this conversation some more. And I would love to even hear from you, Marissa especially as we're talking about waiting. I mean, we were having a conversation in the kitchen right before this of just like different pain points in our life of things we're waiting on. But I would love to hear from you of anything you're waiting on or any areas of your life that do feel like a sting right now when we talk about this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can so relate to this. I feel like, I mean, we're both kind of in this season and as so many people are, I mean, like so much of your twenties or even no matter what age you are, so much of your life, I feel like you're always at some point waiting on something. I know that's something we always say, but it's so true for me specifically right now. I think I mentioned this, but was laid off from my job a couple months ago and I felt like so much peace knew it was so of God, like was so ready for the next thing for me. Like I saw that job as like, this is my preparation season. Mm -hmm. So I am getting ready. Like, God, I'm ready to soar like wherever you want me. Kind of like the verse says in my mind, I like thought I was ready for that. And so even in my prayers and everything, I was like, okay, God, whatever you want for me, I am like, I'm so ready for this. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Like just fully in anticipation, which it's awesome to be like expectant of God. He can move so quick in the same breath of him moving quickly with my previous job and, you know, me needing to kind of leave and move on. But I have just been so convicted of the fact that for me, it's, it's not my time to soar yet. I don't know when it is. It could be tomorrow. It could be a few months. It could be a few years. It could honestly be a few decades, Mm -hmm. like specifically in the area of like career and next stage of life and all these things I'm navigating. And although he's been so faithful and like supplying in-betweens, I've known that these aren't the destination. Mm -hmm. And so I am just so eagerly waiting and praying and so excited to see like, okay, God, what is next for me? And honestly, in this like process of waiting, I think what's been revealed is I am waiting because I am not ready to receive what he has for me yet, because I don't think I'm fully desiring that thing. Like I have desires on my heart and I think he's shaping them. And honestly, I've noticed so much growth even in the past couple of weeks where I'm having to unlearn things. I'm having to surrender certain things. He's remolding my heart. And I think I've just seen such a drastic change where I'm like, thank you, truly thank you, Jesus, that you did not bring something new into my life because my heart has already changed so much that I wouldn't have been in the place to receive it. And I wouldn't have even known what to fully look for or say yes to because I just wasn't there yet. And so I'm speaking into just the season of being just so unknown with career life stage, even as my husband and I start thinking about kids and family and where we want to live. We very much are pivotal season of what's next for us and our future and our family. And so we have so many unknowns and yeah, that's why this conversation is just going to be so honest and raw for me Mm -hmm. because I feel like I'm so in the midst of it. And every single day, God is revealing something new in the waiting and he's transforming my heart in the process too. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, that was so freaking good. <laughs> I'm just like, as you were speaking, it made me think of the things I'm waiting for as well. But it, I feel like it honestly gave me just such a refreshed perspective and truth mm-hmm. over why I'm still waiting. And I love what you said of like, if you would have received what you wanted or you were asking for a moment too soon, you would have probably settled for a different version versus like what God actually is preparing you for. Like right yeah. now, it's infinitely bigger than what you th- think you want. And I know <laughs> that that is so true for me and the things that I'm waiting for. And so you guys know, I feel like it'll be such a like celebration moment for all of my friends listening, my friends, like any of you guys who listen to this podcast, the day that I meet the man that I know I am going to marry, I'm going to have a whole gang celebrating with me. But of course, like naturally one thing that I have been waiting for literally my whole life, God, come on, is to meet my husband. You know, it's something that I desire so much. And I think with every year that passes by, I continue to des- continue to desire until the blessing comes. And not that it's something that is like this all consuming, like defeating thing. But I think naturally, especially even with the new year, it's like, okay, God, like, is this going to be the year that I yeah. finally meet my husband? You know, I've said that probably every single year in my twenties, <laughs> but gosh, I just love what you said because truly, and I also encourage my girlfriends who are single as well. If God would have given me, oh my gosh, if he would have given me someone a year earlier in my life or four years earlier, or five years earlier for me and my story. I like what I wanted then is not what I want now. And I feel like God is yeah. intentionally growing what I want and what I'm expecting because he is wanting this time of my life to align with what he's going to give me in a husband and in a person. And God knows that if I were to have already met my husband, maybe four years ago, let's say, or three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, I would not have been ready or maybe I wouldn't even want it. I'd be Mm -hmm. like, no, that's too much for me. Or, oh no, I don't like this. I don't like that. He does this for fun. And now it's like something I love. Like we just don't know what God still has to craft in ourselves in order for it to come into complete alignment with what he actually wants for us and what he's planning on giving us. Mm -hmm. That is just, yeah, that blows my mind when I really think about it. I imagine that anyone listening is like, you feel the heaviness of what you are waiting for. You feel the pain of what your lowest day, your most discouraged day feels. Mm -hmm. And we are here to hopefully lovingly meet you in that place and encourage you through a couple different things that Marissa and I try our best to imperfectly do to wait well on God. And so we're just going to dive into six different things that we just have seen in our life to be something that roots us, prepares us, and just inspires us in the midst of being in the waiting. So the first one that I want to jump into and speak on is what are you fixing your eyes on, your worries or your promises? And I think this is such a important thing to truly deeply evaluate in your heart and your mind and your soul. Are you spending most of your days waking up in the morning, looking at the new mercies of your day, or are you waking up in the morning and looking at the life that you lack, looking at the thing that is still absent, looking at the promise that has not yet arrived? If you are spending a majority of your day, of your thought process, of your time, constantly consumed by the things that are not yet right in your life, it will crush you. Mm -hmm. It will defeat you. It will leave you so hopeless, so in the dust. And my greatest encouragement, though there are moments in time to allow that to be so real and to dwell in that emotion because that's human and that's normal, I think my greatest encouragement is to fixate your eyes on the promises that have already arrived. 
Fixate your eyes on all the things that there are going right in your life. Fixate your eyes on the beautiful gifts that God has already given you and just praise God for what is already available to you in your life. The worries of tomorrow will remain, but they're not meant for you to worry about all the time constantly. And so really be very aware of where you're fixing your gaze on. And you might even realize like, wow, maybe I am spending way too much time worrying than praising for the promise. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that has convicted me in seasons past. And even in recent moments of my life, when I'm like, Every single day, I'm wondering why I'm feeling so down about myself and feeling Mm -hmm. like I'm in such a rut. And it's like, because I'm waking up and taking on the same lie about myself day in, day out, that I am missing something and that I am in lack. And that will defeat you like no other. That made me think as you were saying this, like I just envisioned, you know how you get like those screen time reports on your phone of like how much time Mm -hmm. I almost wish we could get like audits of our mind where it was like, here's the amount of time that you are spending worrying and in fear, which are lies. You're like meditating on these lies in your life versus here's the amount of time you're like believing in faith and gratitude and like things that are true because I feel like we feel so anxious because our ratio is so off. Like we're really indulging the wrong things. Like we're letting that be what kind of like grows in our mind and what we're meditating on instead of just being in gratitude and just like thinking these things that are actually rooted in reality and hope in Mm -hmm. our life giving. So that's something that Uh, like as I'm speaking it, I'm like, I'm going to see if I can measure that. I'm going to see what like kind of ratio I'm doing and how that like is impacting my day. So that's so good. (laughs) Jumping into number two, and I feel like this goes hand in hand with that is watching your words, what you speak over your circumstance shows your faith. So just like kind of what you meditate on in your mind, Mm -hmm. also what you speak out. So what are you saying in your conversations with friends? in your conversations with close friends and family that you're being very, very honest with, not just presenting to people, but truly what are you speaking out over yourself, whether it's like audible or not? Our words hold so much weight. And I know we always emphasize that because we've seen it to be so true in our life. And so when I notice myself feeling the feeling more vulnerable to anxiety or I'm going through a harder season, so I just need to lean into truth, I will speak scripture over myself. I will have like a few verses that I will physically speak out loud. I'll speak them throughout my day. I'll say them in prayer. I just need to have truth after truth just saturate my mind and my body and my spirit. And I need to have God just speak truth over me because if I don't do that, I am so susceptible to these things that aren't truth and that create so much fear. And so absolutely just speaking a scripture, speaking truth, having people in your life that are going to affirm you in doing that, I think is such a huge way to just wait well in this season because when you're waiting, you're in a very vulnerable season. So yeah, I think too, it's like with whatever you are waiting on, yeah, what is the language that you're speaking about it? And to what Marissa said, it's like not just what you're presenting to people or what you're even presenting to yourself sometimes, it's like, what are your actual thoughts behind what you're waiting for? And I think about like the topic of singleness, for example, or in dating. I have, you know, some friends that when they talk about dating, it's like with so much dread or, uh, I hope that I meet someone or, uh, maybe, maybe it'll happen or, you know, there's just so much dread in the language. Like there's no hope. And I think that's where we need to really be weary and watch ourselves because are we constantly speaking death over the waiting and over the prospect of the promise? Or are we believing like, you know, I am still single another year of my life, but I know it's because God is doing something really great. He is preparing for something so beautiful. I just can't see it yet. Mm-hmm. Those are two different breaths 
right there. And I cannot encourage enough to speak with affirmation over what is to come versus dread in the wondering if it'll come. It'll make yes. all the difference. So th- number three is not settling or compromising in the waiting. And this one is a sneaky, sneaky little one because I think so often we actually don't realize ways we are settling and compromising when we are waiting on a promise. But I think when we are so eager for something to happen in our lives, sometimes in moments of desperation, we are just ready to just grab whatever is in front of us that most resembles what we're actually waiting for. Whether it's a job, whether it's a conversation, whether it's a relationship, we just see what's right in front of us and available in that very moment. And though we can feel the tension that, you know, it's not exactly what I want, but it's right here and it's right now and I'm so desperate. So we choose that thing and we reach for that thing. And more times than not, when you choose a thing that is right in front of you, even at the expense of knowing deep down in your heart, something is not quite exactly what you are hoping for or praying for or wanting, It is not going to fit you the way that it's intended to. It's like forcing a puzzle piece that is not meant to fit. And you will feel the sting of that. And so my greatest encouragement through the waiting is to not compromise and not settle, not choose something because it's easy, but instead push that aside and exchange it for continuing to wait because it is so much worth the wait versus accepting the process of trying to compromise in this area of your life like that is guaranteed to only bring more hurt to your waiting versus if you allow the only hurt to be the waiting you'll be much better off trust me yeah (laughs) so true we both learned that the hard way i feel like okay number four for waiting well is perspective so believing the areas you're waiting the longest will be blessed the most This is something that I feel like I've seen in a lot of other people's lives. And I truly am like just waiting to see it in so many of my own areas. Like I was speaking in the story I was sharing earlier, like that preparation period and even just preparing your heart to receive the blessings and to be more grateful. It just allows you to marinate in this blessing that took a lot of time. Like I think Mm. in order for these beautiful things to form, like beautiful things take time and they're a process. And so you're going to be the most blessed the longer you wait. And I think that's something that should bring like a sense of hope as we're waiting, knowing that, oh my gosh, this thing is being marinated and it's being like prepared. God is literally molding it with his hands Mm -hmm. together and he's not withholding it to forsake us. He's withholding it to prepare us and to get us ready or even to get that thing ready. I think of the example of dating. It's like sometimes he needs to prepare your spouse for you and like prepare Mm -hmm. your heart so you guys are actually in a position to then meet each other when you're at a specific age. So there's so much that's going on in that in between but perspective is a huge huge part of it yes and i think even with like believing that whatever you are waiting the longest in is something that you're gonna be blessed in the most that is like something i refuse to think anything less of when it comes to like my future marriage for example i'm like god has intentionally not given me that gift because he's preparing me for something great and i refuse to believe any other perspective over this area of my life and truly when you believe that and carry that perspective over whatever you're waiting for it is just game changing and it is one that inspires so much hope so much excitement so much expectancy and truly like The only thing that I can conceptualize in my head is like my greatest dream of like what I think is perfect for me in any area of my life. But to know that God has to prepare with more time and diligence, something that is greater than my greatest dream, that is a perspective that I take a hold of when I'm waiting. And it's so funny because I feel like I'm always like thinking in metaphors and it truly just makes me think of the metaphor of, you know, you go to like a fast food place, like in and out. We in California, we love our in and out and it is almost scary how fast it comes out given it's so good. We love how fast it is, 
but you know going in that you are going to be in and out so quick and you know that though it's good you know the quality of what you're receiving it's it's just what it is. It's fast food versus like if you were to go to a Michelin star restaurant, a farm to table, and you have a pre-prepared menu. And let's say you don't even know what is on this menu, but you know that this is like the highest rating restaurant. It is just recently awarded. The chef is like world renowned and you're just going in knowing without knowing what you're about to eat. It is about to be a feast and it's probably about to be one of the best meals of your life. And I think that is literally how God works. Like we can reach for fast food, knowing what we're paying for, knowing what we're getting, knowing what we're choosing, knowing what's quick, easy will satisfy you in a moment. Or we can wait for the process of the experience of the unknown menu prepared by the hands of God that is going to be far greater than anything we could pick up quickly. And it is because you have to wait for the meal to be prepared. That makes it so rewarding. When your stomach, like literally think about it, when your stomach growls, and you know when you're eating a meal and you're like, I'm so starving, I'm so excited to be enjoying this, that is the most gratifying feeling. And that is kind of what God does to us like in the waiting. He allows us to go hungry for more because he wants us to be prepared to feast in the blessing that is to come. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's such a beautiful perspective that we have to grasp a hold of. So God is preparing something really beautiful, better than what you can even expect. And so number five is expressing, inviting others into the areas in which you are hurting. And I think this is something that is so important during this time of waiting in your life. Lean on the people that are going to love you, but not just the people who are going to love you and going to listen to you, but are also believing and championing you in the same things you're waiting for. In moments when you're so discouraged in your singleness, in moments when you're so discouraged in your career, when you're so discouraged of what to do next or wondering when this blessing is going to come into your life, you need people who are in your corner that believe in the promise even when you don't believe it for yourself. You need people who are going to believe the truth over you of like, Hey, like that good gift is coming. Don't lose hope. Don't lose sight of this. I know you feel this way in this moment, but there are beautiful things on it on its way. And I think those types of people and friendships in your life, I really encourage if you have them cling to them during this time, because there are going to be times in our life, especially when we're waiting and when we're vulnerable, when we are not going to believe truth over ourselves, when we are going to grow so weary and so weak in the waiting that we're going to forget that good things are on its way. And that is the moment that we have a beautiful opportunity to lean on friendships and people who love us, who are believing in things that maybe we don't even believe for ourselves. Mm, I love that. That's huge. And then the last and final one, number six, is to thank God in advance for the blessings that haven't arrived yet. This is something, honestly, I feel like I've been doing more recently, and it truly will transform your life. It'll transform your prayer life, your perspective. Again, just kind of speaking life over yourself. I will just very practically thank God for how he's at work, knowing that he is at work, like the metaphor that Bree just shared, how he's preparing this beautiful feast, this beautiful destination for me to reach. So I am just thanking God that he is in that preparation period and that I am going to get to experience that. And that really shifts my heart posture from one of fear and anxiety and honestly just frustration to one of kind of like a kid on Christmas. You're like, oh my gosh, I I can't wait to see Mm -hmm. what it is that you're preparing. And I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. And like, it just puts you in this place of rest and safety and peace. And it just completely transforms your heart and mind. And so this is something that is so, so powerful. And so I just encourage you, whatever it is you're hoping for, for just thanking God in that, speaking scripture and life, like I said, but just thanking him for what's to come and thanking him for how he's at work. Yeah. I think with this one, it, it's so 
important because truly like having faith that something's going to happen for you in your life is you're having faith in something that you can't even see. You're having Mm -hmm. faith in something that hasn't even arrived yet. And for some, some people like to call this manifesting and some people like to say that they're manifesting like a good thing coming and something that I believe is I know I'm going to be intentionally blessed and I know that there's a God who's intentionally at work on my behalf just putting it out there before it even arrives at your doorstep that the gift is on its way and that a beautiful thing is in the works for you because you are deserving and you are worthy of that. And when you can really praise and just celebrate life from that perspective of like, it is not yet here, but I have hope in that one day it will be. That is a heart posture that will carry you so much farther than even your lowest points on days that waiting really hurts and really stings. So Mm -hmm. praise in the waiting. It will change everything for you. And so with that said, those are our six tips on how to wait well and how to dance with both waiting and wanting, but also wanting to do it with such integrity and also just being able to encourage your heart in the mi- in the midst of it all. And lastly, we just want to touch on the topic of just trust. We just want to close out this conversation by speaking that word out loud. And I know that that word sounds so much easier said than done, but we cannot encourage you guys to just trust in the circumstance that you are in. Trust that you are exactly where you were meant to be. You are not a moment behind. You are not doing something wrong. You are where you are meant to be. You are where you are intended to be. And I think there's something so beautiful when we can truly surrender the control. There are things in our life that as much as we try to grasp, we are never going to be in control of. And that is where we get the beautiful opportunity to trust in a God that is so much bigger, can see so much more than we can, and is truly setting a stage for a performance in our life that is going to be far grander than anything you could ever fathom. We never know what's happening behind closed doors. And I know for myself, I find so much heart when I just trust in God versus trust in myself, because to know that there is a God who is so much more powerful and can see so much more than I can, and he is in control of my future. Wow. That just takes the pressure off my shoulders that I have to be in charge and I have to do everything right in order to get the promise that I'm waiting for. And so I just pray that that would even release someone out there who is listening of remember, it's not all on your shoulders. It was never meant to be. And something I keep reminding myself is what a boring life life would be if we didn't have to wait, if we didn't have to go through the process, if we didn't have to be refined, if we didn't have to feel pain and sorrow and longing for more. It is because of all of those emotions and because of the fact that we're all waiting on something that our hope is restored, our character is built, and that the blessing is going to be that much sweeter and that much richer in our life. Believe me, trust me, I'm waiting alongside you too. So I pray that that can encourage someone. Yeah, I love that. That was so, so good. I'm just going to close this out by speaking this verse over all of us. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and it reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. One of my absolute favorite verses, Mm. I just hope that you guys can experience the peace amidst the waiting and that this conversation could just invite you into our waiting and that we could just be there for one another and just lift up our prayers, lift up our our aches and all the emotions that are amidst it, but just seeking God's peace, knowing that we're sending our requests, our prayers to him and that he hears us and he's orchestrating something beautiful beyond what we can even hope for. So we love you guys so much and we hope this conversation was so encouraging. (music) 
Okay, so for this week's love notes, this has been a trend on social media. I'm always a little bit delayed, so I'm sure it's even passed, but it was the ins and outs for 2024, and I thought it was fun. Some are serious, some are kind of silly. Honestly, it was kind of hard to think of some of them, so we just wrote whatever we kind of had come to mind. Maybe they'll make you laugh and you guys can reflect on some of yours. So jumping in... Yeah, jump, jump, jumping in. With ins. Jumping into our ends. <laughs> I'll just say one. I know this is kind of both of ours, mm-hmm. but a big in this year. I mean, this is always in, but just like embracing natural beauty. Mm-hmm. I know you were saying about like natural hair, and mm-hmm. I'm like in my natural nails and like not really wearing makeup most of the time and it's so freeing I love it so much yeah that is a huge one for me too and I was telling Marissa I feel like makeup for me is not really one the only time I wear makeup is usually recording days (laughs) in church but usually during the week I like do not like wearing makeup but a big one for me is like embracing my natural hair and I have naturally wavy hair. This is my natural for those who are watching us via video. And I mean, there's, I think any girl who has like wavy hair can relate. It is such a dance with like, sometimes you love it. And then sometimes you're like, I just want to blow dry my hair straight because I don't want my hair to look like this. And I really want to be more intentional, which I, I feel like I was doing a bit more last year but then I get in like honestly ruts where I like have this false sense of beauty like the standard of beauty and I'm like Mm -hmm. no I have to blow dry my hair but I'm gonna say no to that and try to be more intentional with wearing my hair natural yes I love that and it's so pretty (gasps) thanks Okay, I'm going to just rapid fire a few more of mine and they are trying new things. That was a huge thing last year. Mm -hmm. Definitely carrying into this year. I just want to try all the things. Another one, buying flowers for no reason. Mm -hmm. This is something I want to get better about because I feel like I love buying flowers, but I always have to justify it. And I want this to be the year that anytime I see flowers I love, I just get them just because... And then another one, this one's so random and I don't know if this is even gonna like make sense, but I never really wore like vests growing up or like at all until this past end of this last year. And then going into this year, I have been loving wearing vests. So vests for me are in, I'm so delayed, but my husband and I are like all about our vest game right now. It's so funny. That's so (laughs) cute. I love that. Some of my ends are thrifting more, which I have like end of last year, I was like on my thrifting game. And honestly, a majority of my stuff nowadays is thrifted. I love the idea that nobody can replicate my outfit. Yeah. (laughs) That's like actually my favorite thing. Um, So thrifting more, actually one of mine is posting on social media more and just being more creative for myself. I love creating. I love sharing on social media. I do it a lot, but I want to be really intentional with it this year. Not that I wasn't last year, but I just, I really want to put myself out there more. I want to invite you guys in a little bit more. That's a really big one for me. And then another one is just listening to my body better. I think with marathon training, of course, that takes so much of a toll on your body. And I've already seen this time around that I'm being a lot more patient and delicate and gracious with myself. And I think that's something that I just want to continue doing, really trusting my body and pressing into that more. Also, cycle syncing for my ladies, which I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure you guys are all ladies other than the one or two boys that might listen (laughs) sometimes. But I really want to get so intentional with my body this year of like knowing the foods to eat at different phases of my cycle, knowing what I need, not just with like my body and rest, but also like my social capacity, like what I shouldn't or shouldn't be doing during different phases of my cycle. Like even that's something we've talked about. Like sometimes podcast recording is so hard when I'm on my period because I have such bad brain fog and I just want to like get that dialed for myself of like, I want to know what to expect at every phase of my cycle. So that's an end for me. Yeah, those are good. I definitely want to do that as well. Okay, now jumping to our outs. There are a lot of outs if we're honest. Some of the ones that came to mind for me 
This one stings because I am an online shopper and I love online shopping. However, if you guys listen to my resolutions, one of them was doing the no buy month, which I'm very oh, amidst. Yeah. And you know, it's getting me to just be more aware of how to be a more intentional consumer. And part of that, I really want to like shop local and sh- shop small and in person. And I feel like that'll also help me shop a lot less. So online shopping is a semi out. I'm not going to restrict it. And then another out is no boundaries on social media, which I feel like we all have boundaries at this point, but just really upholding those. And then another one that came to mind was making decisions slash operating from a place of fear. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but honestly, I was even reflecting on even just like small, silly decisions. And I'm like, I'm making this decision because I'm afraid of missing out or I'm afraid of this. And I'm like, never again are we making decisions from a place of of fear. Like we need to lead with peace and trust in that. And then the last one I'm going to mention is silly, and it has been banned in our household to say the ick. My husband is very anti the ick, and I've had to unlearn to say that. And yeah, so those are good outs. (laughs) (laughs) Those are so good. Um, My outs, so one of my outs going along with like wanting to thrift more is buying new things less which like I said I was already kind of not doing that as much like even with home decor and clothes like I love to thrift and I like one of my goals is to develop a really unique style this year which I think I already Mm, do have yeah I feel like you do but I want to continue that and I think like yeah I just I I don't want to buy what everyone else has I really don't I love that. And I think that's hard living in a city like LA where it's like there's like almost like a cookie cutter like style Style. and things. So true. And I'm like, that's exactly why I want to do things so differently. And I think with that said, I think naturally we, a lot of us struggle with comparison, but I think even with like style choices or hair choices or beauty choices, at least speaking on behalf of myself, I see, even though I don't feel like I actively struggle with like oh painful comparison I think those decisions come from comparing myself and comparing what I think the standard of LA beauty is and so that's an out for me I literally don't want to be comparing myself (laughs) to any standard of anything like I want to be so fiercely myself uniquely myself and just like embrace that so that is my in and my out um my one of my outs I like don't want anyone to hold me accountable to this. Like, <laughs> like let it come back in. Probably will. I want to not buy coffee seven days a week, which sounds insane. Some some people might get it, but then some people are like, you buy it seven days a week. Yeah, sometimes I do. <laughs> it's and an experience thing. It's like it's just my it's my morning routine. Yeah. Every single day I'm like, which coffee shop am I gonna go to? Which employees am I gonna go see? I just I love it so much, but I think in wanting to be a little more financially wise this year, it's something that I want to be more intentional about the decision to buy. So I wanna maybe like bring it to like three coffees a week. I think that's a good goal. And I think that's realistic. <laughs> that's, that sounds so silly. People are going to call you out if you post your coffee. They're like, like Brie, <laughs> you're this has been four. <laughs> yeah, this has been every single day this week. And they're like, well, maybe I walked in and didn't buy anything. That's probably not true. Okay, you guys should comment what your ins and outs are. That would be super fun that to would know. Be so cute. I love, I feel like when people say them, I'm like, there's so many. I'm like, yes, yes, I relate to like what yeah. everyone's been saying. But hopefully these were fun. I know they're kind of random, but we hope you guys loved this episode and we will see you in our next one. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you so much for listening. We pray this episode was encouraging and life-giving. If you found it valuable, please share it with a friend, leave a review and subscribe. And be sure to follow us along over on Instagram at with love always podcast. Signing off with all of our love always, Brie and Marissa.